Welcome back, you lovely weirdos. It's Gino One Fat Agent coming to you again with another one of these FIFA 17 experiments. And today we're gonna go with the most expensive team versus, you know, on the bargain basement Tesco team. So to clarify, for the most expensive players, I've chosen well the most expensive players in their position. So the top three most expensive players in their position, I would put them all on the same team, and we'll see how well they do in one season. But then on the flip side of that coin, I go ahead and I create a whole entire team of youngsters who are under the value of five million. But while they obviously aren't gonna win the league in the first or a couple of seasons anyway, I'm banking on the potential and I wanna see how long it would take or even if you need to spend hundreds of millions of dollars if you want to go ahead and win the league. But first and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at the most expensive players in the world. And we're gonna start off with the most expensive player and that is Paul Pogba right here. Went for 80 million, I believe, over to Manchester United. And then before that, a former most expensive player in the world, that's Cristiano Ronaldo. But in the game, he actually is not the most expensive player in the world. And that honor actually goes to Neymar. And that, I believe, is because Neymar is substantially younger. As you can see, Ronaldo is at the age of 31. Neymar, still at the age of 24, still has room to grow, and that's why they kind of contribute a little bit more value on them. That's probably why the likes of like Paul Pogba are extremely high, while well, you know maybe someone a little bit older like Ozil is not as high. But this is the all checkbook team, as you can see over here: Cristiano Ronaldo, Suarez, Messi, Modric, Ozil, Pogba, Ramos, Boateng, Lam, and Alba. And in between the sticks, Manuel Neuer. Obviously, he's the most expensive. But behind them, you have the likes of Lewandowski, Griezmann. Bale. Kind of an odd one though on the right side. Mkhitaryan sneaks in as the third most expensive right mid right wing player in the game. Would not have anticipated that. At the cam position you got the legs of Kevin De Bruyne. You got James Rodriguez along with Ozil, Modric. And then for the CDM position you got Busquets, uh, Cavallo, and Casemiro along with Tony Cruz who can play a little CDM. Backing up the center desk you got the likes of Godin, Hummels, and then interesting Varane. And I think he's another one because he's so young. He's only the age of 23 and has such high potential. That's why his value kind of skyrockets and at the fullback positions you got the likes of Carvajal and Alba and the two keepers behind Neuer are David De Gea and Courtois so yeah it's the most Galacticos of Galacticos team and now we're gonna go ahead put them through the rigor save it to the end of the season in the Premier League as they are Manchester United as you can see and see where they finish I think it's a foregone conclusion though they will win the league but we'll see go ahead take it away Tom was it all right, we sit on June of 2017, and what does not bode well is right here, I have a 66 in my breaking, but we'll take a look at the player stats really quickly. Ronaldo on top, and then Mkhitaryan in fifth place with the amount of goals scored, 22 goals for Ronaldo. I swear to God, ever since Ronaldo became the cover boy at FIFA 18, they've done something to his coding where he's an absolute monster in assists, but we got 14 assists, and then Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, gets seven, so he's in fifth place. And then Boop sitting on top once again, Manchester United with the most amount of clean sheets and his Manuel Neuer with 13. Well done, well done. So yeah, even though I'm at a 66, I'm pretty sure that it's... What? How? What? How does this even make sense? Oh my God, Manchester United got one more loss and draw than Arsenal. And Arsenal won the league. Arsenal, without Ozil, beat a team with the likes of Manuel Neuer, Boateng, Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar, Suarez, Lewandowski, Bale. It's what? I don't know. Maybe there was a team chemistry issue. That is the only thing that I can predict. But let's just say, obviously, if I redid this over nine times out of ten, this Galacticos team would absolutely smash the league. And then we go ahead and we flip it over to the under 5 million players over here. And as you can see, I've assembled basically the best Wonderkins, well, cheap Wonderkins the world has to offer. Or at least FIFA Career Mode has to offer. To go through all of these would take way too long. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this group of Wonderkins and I'm going to simmer forward a couple of seasons. And then we're going to see just how many seasons it would take for this sim team to go ahead and win the league. And as you can see, they're they're not very high. They're, you know, the I think the highest rated player is this guy, you know, 74 is is the highest. So they're not even like a championship caliber side. So I'm thinking realistically, over under five years to win the league with this side, just with pure simming. And I'm gonna make a prediction right here. And I might I, I might get it wrong, but I'm gonna say five years 
or less, they could win the league. If I get it correct, well, you know, something pleasant happens at the end of this. Let's just say it's, uh, you know, like a really satisfying video or something. But if I get it wrong, we're going to go back to fault to the one that people have been wanting to see for a while. And that is Nipple Slap. Yeah. Without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's sim into the future and just see how many seasons does it take right here. Remember, we start in 2016. So for me to escape scot-free, they need to have won the league by 2021. Take it away, time wizard. Go, time wizard! All right, as you can see, we are now in June of 2021. <laughs> and it does not look well for me because you see over here, it's 59 in my manager rating. Let's go over to the player stats and see how they've done in the league. And they're... It's Gabriel Jesus who's on top of the league, pretty predictable. But a couple of Manchester United names pop up there. You see Barco and Emery Moore uh, in, I believe, 6th place and 10th place, respectively, for the top scores. Go ahead and click one over to assist. There are no Manchester United players on the top 15. Oh, no. <laughs> and then we go over to clean sheets. Okay, a little bit more hope. Dragowski, who is our keeper. Got 12 clean sheets, which tied for best in the league. And Crystal Powell's you picked up Jan Summer. Nice. Uh, but yeah, with that, I don't really predict that uh, I, I think I might get nipple slapped is what I'm trying to say. Or not! I am a prediction god! Look at this! Look at this! And a team of scrubby scrubs, 74 and lower rated in five seasons is able to defeat the Arsenal team. I mean, arguably through those five years, that Arsenal team got a lot weaker, but still able to defeat that Arsenal team that the Galactico team couldn't even beat in five years. In five years. And let's go take a look at just how much these kids have grown. As you can see, our main keeper right here, uh, Dragowski got up to an 85. Standouts, he's got ex excellent kicking, and he's basically dark green in all the keeper positions. And the back of the keeper didn't do all too bad either. Thomas Didion, or Didion, I don't know how you properly pronounce it, but as you can see, he got up to an 82. He's very, very nice. Timothy Fosumitsa got up to an 83, and man, like, look at those defensive stats. And he's still got 87 short passing. This is Hakimi from Real Madrid. He got up to 92 sprint speed, pretty good short passing and ball control. Passlock from Borussia Dortmund got up to an 80 as well. Not the fastest, but excellent balance, stamina, and jumping, as well as good acceleration and crossing. And 94 short passing, very, very nice. Klosterman, I believe he came from RB Leipzig, has 99 sprint speed, 91 acceleration, 86 jumping, and 81 stamina. Excellent short passing, stand tackling, wow. In the center back position, you have Matthias De Ligt, from Ajax, he got up to an 82. Not the fastest, but very, very strong. Excellent heading. Uh, very, very good defensively. Denier, I think he's from Man City, Um, I believe. 89 sprint speed and 82 strength. Very, very good. Short passing as well is a 92. Can play it out the back. Then you have this Korean guy. Got up to 80. He's got 99 sprint speed, though, with 93 strength. What an absolute tank, man. Then you have Opa Makano. I believe he's from Leipzig as well. Also got up to 99 sprint speed, 84 strength. What an absolute monster. Kevin Carter, Victor, the American, only got up to 78. I guess he didn't get all the play time. But once again, another center back who got up to 99 pace. Adam Nagy got up to an 84. And he's just extremely well-rounded, good, good stand tackle, good short passing, good ball control, good long pass. Manuel Locatelli from AC Milan didn't grow too much in the physicals. That is a bit disappointing, but he's pretty well-rounded everywhere else. I can see long passing is the deep greens and slide tackle, short passing, stand tackle, and ball control. There you go, Chessia. A little bit disappointing in the strength and the jumping, but he more than makes up for it with agility, acceleration, and sprint speed. Prop still very good finishing at 85 and good short pressing, shot power, ball control, and dribbling. Kai Havertz got up to an 83. Didn't grow as much as I want in the physicals, but technically he is a god. 91 long passing, 94 dribbling, 88 ball control, as long as excellent finishing and cross. Emery Moore, as you can see, he is an absolute handful. 99 agility, 98 acceleration, 92 sprint speed, 96 balance. He is just an absolute lightning bug in there. Then Sakaria grew to an 85 as a center mid, and man oh man oh man, 94 stamina, 84 strength. And look at that, Dark Reigns, 92 in short passing and 94 in stand tackle. What a competitor. Nicola Barrea actually became one of our speedier midfielders with 84 sprint speed, excellent balance and stamina. He's got good short passing, long passing, ball control, and dribbling as well. 
Tottenham's Harry Winks got up to an 83. Pretty decent in the physicals. Strength could use a little bit of work, but everything else very technically gifted. Great long shots, good short passing, good long passing, dribbling, and ball control. And if you take nothing away from this experiment, it's by this guy. Ezekiel Barco was one of our cheapest players that you could get at the start of career mode. But he grew to an 84. And look at these maddening stats, man. 90 agility, 97 acceleration, 91 sprint speed, 88 balance, 83 stamina, and then here we go. 96 dribbling, 88 ball control, 99 finishing. I repeat, 99 Finishing for a left mid. He's also got decent penalties and short pass on him. My freaking god. And what I love about him is he's got four star skill boost. Can even play the center mid position. Ryan Gall became a 99 pace monster as he got it in sprint speed, acceleration, and agility. Uh, everything else is like pretty good, but I think people kind of know about him already. Josh Adoba, another Tottenham product. Very, very, uh, very, very pacey indeed. 92 in the sprint speed, 93 in acceleration, 94 in agility. Another another one that impressed from the wings is David Neres of Ajax. The young Brazilian is absolutely frightening with 98 sprint speed, 96 acceleration, and 98 agility. And then you go ahead and take down. He's got 80 finishing, which is nice. But then he's got 90 plus in ball control, dribbling, short passing, and my, my gosh. Son of a legend, Justin Cliver didn't turn all too bad either. Uh, dark greens and agility, acceleration, sprint speed, and balance. Crossing, ball control, and short passing. And then I finish it off with these strikers. And guys, go ahead and wet your lips right here because look at Tammy Abraham. Got up to an 84, 99 sprint speed, 97 acceleration, 94 strength. He's the next Lukaku here. And that, why do I say that? It's because of this. He's six foot three and he's got 99 pace and 94 strength. You're welcome world. And then you got Moussa Bailey. He lit it up for Celtic this past season and he's probably destined for bigger and better things very soon. 97 sprint speed, 90 acceleration, and he is no weakling either. 94 strength, 88 finishing. What a monster. And this guy, Amat Dow, he was one of the cheaper ones that you could get too. And look at these stats, man. 99 in sprint speed, acceleration, 94 in agility, good balance, good stamina, very, very well-rounded in, in the uh, physical package. 90 finishing, 99 dribbling, 89 shot power, and 90 volleys. Just tap it anywhere in his vicinity and he's gonna absolutely pile drive it in the back of the net. And we did save the best for last. Letaro Martinez got up to an 88. But how he gets up to an 88 is he's got damn near 90 in ball control, dribbling, long shots, volleys, shot power, and heading accuracy and finishing. I mean, this experiment turned out to be more of a growth experiment than anything else, but yeah, these youngsters are absolute monsters. Go ahead and get them in your career mode right away. All right, and if you did enjoy this kind of a little bit of a mixer from our usual experience, go ahead, take your dimple, and go ahead and smush it right into that like button right now, and subscribe if you want to have a little bit more odd FIFA content in your life. If you want to check out my latest piece of the TV stream, go ahead and click up here. Dings and poos. And if you want to check out my channel ruins all of career mode, go ahead and click down here. Dings and poos. My name is v Manus. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Remember, stay yourself, stay humble, and be weird. <laughs> ah, I burped.